Hi hey everyone, Rob here with today's Western Pacific weather update. A lot to talk about today. We are still watching Typhoon Guchu. It is now moving away from Okinawa. And actually, here's some footage coming out from Okinawa earlier today, just outside of Naha. You can see some of these waves crashing on shore here. You know, up to about 10 meters could be expected in the coming days. So these are actually minuscule to some of the waves that could be seen across much of Japan. We'll actually get to that in a second. But also, here's some more footage uh, coming out from uh, actually right there around Kadena where you can see uh, the person that actually took the footage. I'm going to put the annotation on the screen here of the actual YouTube video this came from. Can't even really get out there on the balcony due to the strong wind gusts that were currently occurring there. It did look like max winds reported at Naha Airport were at 81 kilometers per hour. Some of the other winds could have been a little bit stronger outside of the airport there. But let's look a little more in detail at the radar picture here. You can see here actually the loop over the past three hours, a very well-defined eye wall here just towards the southeast of Okinawa, but the fantastic news was that that remained it off just towards the southeast. Also, the storm system remained just towards the east of Okinawa, vice towards the west, thus you were in the left front quadrant. So you got to remember this storm system is moving forward at 30 kilometers per hour. That means actually the winds on the right side of the storm are 60 kilometers per hour stronger than on the left side because you have that forward momentum to count in with the forward wind speed that's 30 kilometers faster over here and 30 kilometers less than that center of wind near the center of circulation so that's one reason why also only the max winds top down about 44 knots at Naha Airport Vice or actually 81 kilometers per hour Vice the max winds that were being uh, estimated here in the center of circulation at 216 kilometer per hour gusts so really good news there across much of Okinawa including the rest of the southern Japanese islands as far as the storm system and those outer rain bands but still you might be seeing some of these move on shore here in the overnight hours could be bringing some very severe weather you also have to remember there's a threat those are still those heavy rain bands and even a weak tornado could still be coming out of this but the forecast is where the main threat is going to be here from now and going into the coming days and this is actually the model consensus here showing numerous models and right now it is expected uh, at least by the models to make landfall here right around the key peninsula uh, going into a about tomorrow afternoon that would be about Tuesday afternoon for everybody watching this worldwide about a zero zero to about zero six UTC right in this area here and this area actually if you remember last year Typhoon Talas which made an approach from this direction affected the key peninsula and brought a lot of rainfall on shore here uh, causing widespread devastation plenty of deaths were reported out of this and landslides actually some landslides created land dams which eventually burst and it was just an absolute horrible situation this time it does look like the storm is moving a lot faster than Talas making landfall here actually right on Shikoku even over towards the key peninsula but I do believe that this area right in here is going to be seeing that heaviest precipitation and if we look at the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency's outlook on you can see that they are also expecting that landfall right about 06 UTC on Tuesday here just near Shikoku and then eventually over towards the key peninsula which is this area right in here and eventually moving overland into the Japanese Alps where it would likely get very disrupted by the Japanese Alps here and really what that's going to cause is kind of like a squeezing of the sponge all this rainfall is going to come out of it and I do think that in some areas you could be seeing upwards of about 500 even 600 millimeters of rainfall especially here along the southern portions of the key peninsula this track does remain true because you got to remember you have that cyclonic circulation coming around the storm it's going to be grabbing all this moisture pushing on shore this is a mountainous area right in here and just like I said squeezing all of that moisture and it could be bringing some a very intense rainfall landslides are also going to be a major risk here so uh, definitely this is a developing story still even though it has passed Okinawa and actually on that note as far as Okinawa at least good news we have not heard any damage reports coming out of the area here you have to remember this island and all the southern Japanese islands uh, for example though are very battle hardened when it comes to typhoon so fantastic news as far as that uh, the only real damage or any injuries that would likely happen is anybody tried to venture out to the coastlines here and put themselves into a dangerous situation, but most people here do know to stay out of it. But as the storm continues to push off here towards the northeast, you see all this dry air wrapping around it. Well, this is going to be causing the winds to pick up here across much of the southern Japanese islands, but good news actually by tomorrow morning all this dry air is going to be making it for an absolutely sunny and beautiful day across much of this region as that storm continues to race off here towards the north 
But as we look back at the forecast here now, as that storm continues to push off there towards the north, like I said, that dry air will be pushing across much of Okinawa, but then behind it, more moisture from the rainy season front, and then eventually uh, Talman out here, which we're going to hit to in a second, is going to be pushing off there, providing yet even more rainfall. But with this high resolution coamps model what we can see is the storm pushing off there towards the northeast and this is the frame I want to be focusing on here because this is where the heaviest precipitation is going to be occurring it is by Tuesday afternoon remember you have that low pressure center right there all that moisture pushing on short and you can see it all building up in here this is indicating over 50 millimeters an hour actually in these areas and the purples actually up to about 60 to 70 millimeters an hour could be occurring so a very intense and heavy rain fall coming with the system as it continues to push on shore. Uh, as far as the Kanto area, I do think that upwards of about uh, 50 to 100 millimeters could be occurring there as well. Even higher in some locations, localized locations, especially into your evening, into your overnight or late night hours, about this time tomorrow actually. Uh, definitely I'll be trying to get some reports here from my position just outside of Shibuya. Now I know a lot of people, and I'm only going to touch this on this very, very shortly, are worried about the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. I do know that they are taking care of the situation out there. Uh, I, I want to strongly stress though uh, the minuscule amount of radiation that could be pushed by the wind here. It, it's actually about the same amount that with most of the westerly storms that push through Japan on almost a daily basis um, the, as far as the winds that are going to be affecting the Fukushima Daiichi area. I do want to also stress it's Fukushima Daiichi not Fukushima. Fukushima is actually a city that's nearly one or about 50 kilometers away from Fukushima Daiichi. Two separate areas. I hear a lot of people talking about that. I uh, just want to strongly stress that that is minuscule compared to the amount of heavy rainfall and landslides that are likely going to be occurring along the east coast of Japan here. So definitely let's focus on this. Please don't put any comments about the uh, Fukushima area into the comment box below. So with that said, let's actually start to move away from Guchul here, which is still pushing off here towards the northeast and eventually going to be running that rainy season stationary front that's bringing some heavy precipitation across Korea today. And actually over the past 24 hours, some areas out here have seen upwards of about 100 to 150 millimeters of rainfall. So even heavy rainfall here. But let's quickly look at a Talman. Now Talman moving off here towards the northeast and what this is going to be doing is bringing some heavy rainfall. I don't expect this storm system to increase to a typhoon and neither does the Japan Meteorological Agency for that matter as they have this storm going up to about a very strong tropical storm moving through the Taiwan Strait here and then off there towards the northeast. By this time though it's going to be really impacted by some high vertical wind shear. Uh, basically uh, the upper level winds are going to knock this over kind of like if you had a chimney you would want that straight up in the air. If it was leaned over to the side smoke would actually have a kind of a hard time getting out there uh, that's kind of a very rough example of what the wind shear is going to be doing here but as it moves off here towards the northeast the main factor is going to be the heavy rainfall you got to remember southern Taiwan also portions of southeastern China here have been battered by heavy precipitation the past several weeks widespread flooding and landslides specifically across here in Taiwan you have that mountain range right there in the middle and as this moisture is going to be pushing here you have that cyclonic circulation just again like up there in the key peninsula that moisture will be pushing onshore uplift thus heavy localized rainfall will once again be occurring here across much of southern Taiwan. So definitely we will continue to keep you posted on these two tropical systems out here in the western Pacific as both of them do have the potential to be causing some flooding and landslides out here. But that's all for right now everybody. Thanks again for watching here at westernpacificweather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions as always please post them in the comment box below and also I do want to remind you we are not an official agency here at westernpacificweather.com at all. Uh, please do refer to the Japan Meteorological Agency for your most recent warning and advisories on the tropical systems out here in the Western Pacific. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there. Have a good night.